Hey, I'm Jason. I'm Jam. And welcome back to Podcast for Your Life. The podcast where we share thoughts from our life for yours in 15 minutes or less. Yep. Or we will add another person to our show. <laughs> Just kidding. We're going to do that anyway today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, today we'll be having a strange kind of crossover. Um, I was about to say crossover hit, but that's TBD, the hit part. <laughs> but we're doing a crossover of two different For Your Life podcasts. We have, obviously, Jason and I, who you're used to hearing. And then we have Melissa from Chemistry for Your Life, the other For Your Life podcast. Uh, Melissa, would you care to introduce yourself? And Woo-hoo! <laughs> Yeah, can I just say, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. <laughs> um, I'm Melissa, and normally I say I'm a chemist, so I feel like I should say that again. And then Jason and I can both sit, just say, and we're not. <laughs> <laughs> What's a chemist? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'm really excited. I'm excited to be here. It's so different. It's so free form. I'm I'm used to lesson plans and whatnot. And I probably feel the most comfortable between both of you guys because I'm used to recording with each of you, just not together. So this is like an even better recording session than normal. Um, but one thing that one reason why this is happening, um, it's great to have Melissa no matter what, but she brought to our attention that she had a lot of thoughts about books. Hmm. Yes, I have had these burning questions since February of 2019. That's that's a long time to have questions. That's a long time to be burning. (laughs) (laughs) And I don't have any satisfying answers, so maybe we can come up with some today. We certainly can't try our best. Promise that we can promise we'll try. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) that's right. We'll 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 at least have some thoughts in the next uh, 14 minutes. (laughs) So I guess the question to kick us off is, what are books? Melissa, do you have any thoughts about books? I mostly have questions about what books are. So I don't feel like I have any thoughts on the actual definition of a book. I just don't understand what they are. What's the broadest definition that you can come up with? It just seems like a really long collection of words that make some kind of cohesive narrative fiction or not. Mm, nice. Right? I like that. A long collection of words that make mm-hmm. a something. Yeah, yeah. That make a cohesive something. Yeah. What about kids' books, though? Like, I have some baby books that are definitely less words, more pictures. Mm. Yeah. And not long are either. Are they still books? <laughs> They're definitely not long. Yeah. <laughs> some of them are actually too short. I'm like, Man, I wish this had three more chapters because you'd fall asleep by that then. That brings but. up a good point. So it's like, it doesn't have to be words. It's a collection of some things that create a cohesive something. <laughs> <laughs> of yeah. some length. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm. We're already feeding into the questions that I have about what counts as a book. <laughs> That's kind of Sweet. how we arrive at it, too, because it's like, okay, forget everything we know as humans who have been alive and have kind of been operating with some amount of success through the universe for some amount of time, forget all that. And let's try to teach ourselves what something is from the beginning. Yeah. It's so weird if you stop and think about it. So it sounds like books are, have words or they are words and they sometimes have pictures. Is that a fair (laughs) cohesive definition? I think so. And usually they're on paper used Mm. to be, but Mm -hmm. not anymore. That's right. Yeah. Um, ebooks are now a thing. Mm-hmm. And di- yeah, digital everything. Audiobooks, audiobooks also. So they're not even like in physical form. They're like in, well, maybe they're, I guess an audiobook would be technically physical form at its like very core of the computer data file, whatever. But it's like through the air. So it's like sort of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is where my deepest question about what counts as a book comes into play with audiobooks. Are you ready for it? Mm, Yes, please. So there's a podcast that I sometimes listen to and they did a five part series and each part was more than an hour. So it was like a seven part series and they write out a script and then a narrator reads it. And that's called a podcast. And then a podcaster I know wrote a book and read it and it's only an audiobook. There's no paper copy of it. So what's the difference? Why oh, is one man. a podcast and one's an audiobook? Are all podcasts audiobooks, kind of? Mm. Whoa. Wow. Yikes. Copyrighted material. Damn. We should have been charging people all along. <laughs> man. 
yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if people would have maybe would have like decreased people's chances of listening, but you know, whatever. Maybe <laughs> it's worth it. Yeah, that's a very, that's a very good question, Melissa. I haven't really thought like too deeply about them. I even listened to a podcast that came to mind when you were talking that the guy absolutely writes out pretty much seems to me word for word what he's going to say on the podcast ahead of time. But it's it doesn't feel like it's not a podcast. It's not a narrative story. It's just that he um all, writes it all out. He's a, like a word for word preparer kind of person. And right. it's an analytical podcast. So it makes sense for that context. But I would certainly not think of it as a book. So or not a book. That's weird. It's a weird mm. line, right? Yes. I feel like I feel like things have evolved. Like this is like talking about the almost the evolution of books. Like they used to be on like stone tablets, like four chapters, four <laughs> tablets. And now we're talking about these things that exist over the airwaves, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So then maybe maybe there's no way to really define what a book is at this point. <laughs> Can I stir one more complex thing in? Yeah, we, please. Yes. Yeah. This is what got me started about it. Okay, my favorite book from when I was a little kid was Ella Enchanted. And I was reading it and my roommate wanted to go to sleep. So we turned off the lights and I just found a PDF of it online and read that. And I finished it in like two days. The whole PDF was online? Yeah. Wow. It was probably <laughs> legal. Sorry, <laughs> world. But I do own a copy of the book, so I feel a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. But I finished it really fast and I was like, I read papers, like journal papers mm -hmm. that have been longer than that. So once we're in the PDF ebook file, again, where do we draw the line between what counts as a book and what doesn't? Right. Yeah, I feel like I feel like so much of it comes down to the intent of it, um, which is a kind of a non-answer in some ways. But people say, okay, I made this thing and here's the format I want it to be in. And it's almost like it's completely up to them to say what the format is. So it's like, it's a book I wrote, but... It's only on audio form, and I am going to release it for free in a podcast. It's like, <laughs> okay, man, it's up to you, but that's confusing. Okay, but we'll listen. So, and I feel like the whole difference between like journals, like an academic journal or an article or like a paper or an essay versus a book, it almost ends up sometimes being a really blurry line, and it just kind of helps you have a certain set of expectations about it. So like... A lot, the reason you wouldn't call a lot of podcast books is probably because they aren't trying to tell a cohesive story or make one cohesive point that they're building to, toward they're discussing something or yeah. know, they're interviewing somebody. And so they're like, oh, this is not a book. It's this. But if they planned it and wrote it out and had paragraphs and built an argument, they might think, oh, it's a book. Or I'm telling you a story. It's a book. So I don't know. Does that seem like that's total BS or does that seem like it's getting somewhere? <laughs> I don't know. Mm. And I think ebook is easy because oftentimes the ebook only exists because a physical version also exists. That's not always the case now, but at the beginning, that was how it was. And so then there's this format and there's readers for it. And it feels like there is parameters around the ebook deal. Yeah, it does feel like ebooks almost had to exist as a book first most of the time. Mm -hmm. And it, and it's, I do think so much of it must be the intent of just what did this person set out to do hmm. just to get things a little crazy right now. There's a podcast who that is just reading a book chapter by chapter. Oh gosh, that is confusing. The podcasts, <laughs> I mean, I think we, we've talked about this a little bit. I can't remember if we've talked about this ever on air. Um, maybe Jason. Yeah. Jason and I did a podcast about podcasts requested by a Chad one time <laughs> and we talked about how like the intent of podcasts was to be free and the the platform, the way they're released, all that stuff is kind of what it was all built on. And then now there's some that are not free, which is a huge problem and it starts to mess with the categories. <laughs> um, so I feel like if you are just reading a book on a podcast, it is a podcast in which you're reading a book, but what's weird is that podcasts are free. So as long as you're <laughs> playing by the rules of both things, you can make it happen. This is a book I'm reading on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> as long as the podcast is free, I feel like you're not messing things up. But if you're if you are charging for it, then I think it's not a podcast anymore. It's an audiobook. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think this one's definitely still a podcast. And they're not they're not doing any commercials or anything, I think, to make it legal for them to do that. So 
That one's definitely a book on a podcast, but there are some other ones that really blur the lines. Audiobooks only, especially. Yeah. I'm not a fan of audiobooks because I like to be able to like make the voices for people in my head. And if somebody's reading it in their voice, I feel like it takes the voice away. Like particularly with fiction. I like to be able to imagine like the scene in my head while I'm reading it, as well as like hear it in my head. And when somebody's reading it to me, I just feel like I can't. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that's what their voice sounds like versus like, oh, I would have had them sound a different way in my head. Does it make sense? Like it's yeah. all imagination and like how ah. that works with reading fiction mm-hmm. versus listening to it. Um, Cause like audio dramas are like completely different. That's like, okay, cool. That's the character that's what they sound like, but it's when like it's a just a book and it's, you know, somebody reading it. So that's why I love reading uh, a physical thing, e- whether it's an ebook or whether it's physical pieces of paper or papyrus or tablets, whatever you guys are <laughs> you know, up to these days. Well, Jason, um, let me stir something else in for you. Please. Do you yes. think it counts as reading a book if you listen to an audiobook? Because I always feel guilty logging audiobooks on my Goodreads account. I have no idea. I, I, I have an opinion, I think, on this one. Now, I'm a little opposite of Jason. I only use audiobooks for fiction because I found that um, it's, it's the only thing I can listen to in audio form where I can actually kind of retain it and really get into it. If I tried to listen to a nonfiction book in an audiobook format, I feel like I would like get a lot less info, retain a lot less. But because it's a story with a fiction book, it keeps my attention and I've noticed I just don't have, I don't really make time for reading fiction physically, but if I'm driving or road tripping, then I'll listen to an audiobook and it feels like I can make time for it there. But because of that, I think it counts as reading it, not because I'm like wanting to, you know, get more points or something, but because I'm like, oh yeah, I read Dune, meaning I know the entire story. I listened to the entire thing. But if it was maybe like a nonfiction book where there's some level of like, credentials that come with having read it or completed it it might feel different but like it almost feels like what i'm really saying when i say i read a book is for fiction i feel like i've completed the story not really like i don't feel like my focus in, is not is on the word read does that make sense yeah yeah so i think what we've decided is there's like no such thing as books <laughs> <laughs> that's a perfect uh, encapsulation of all the thoughts <laughs> Melissa. thank you that really is wow that's <laughs> books don't exist <laughs> there's just no there's no thing that you can for sure say is a book or is not does that mean that libraries don't exist either oh, no. no libraries definitely exist because they have everything in them they have audiobooks they have ebooks they have non-books magazines computers mm-hmm. and they're a building so mm-hmm. they're super easy to define because of their buildingness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. one thing i noticed in high school is that the DVD rental or borrowing came out uh, when I was in high school. And so instead of going to the library just to get your favorite books or comic books or whatever, now we were going to get like the next disc of, you know, the West Wing or something. (laughs) And so it's like the library transformed from the place you get books for free and get to experience the joy of reading to the place where you get to experience the joy of free blockbuster. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So there you go. That concludes our sub-segment of the show, Libraries for Your Life. <laughs> <laughs> Books, they don't exist. Books, hear it with your eyes or see it with your ears, doesn't matter. <laughs> Books, your ears can read too. There, that's good, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> that is good, that is good. What about books, podcasts that you pay for? Oh! Yeah, I like that, I like it. I almost said podcast books that are free, but I decided to stick with the books format, you know? <laughs> or you could say like... <laughs> Books, analog podcasts. <laughs> yeah, good. that's okay. Good. We wrote our podcast. We got our podcast. We transferred it into some uh, physical words using some ink and some uh, some pulp from a tree. And now you can <laughs> look at our podcast instead of just hearing it. Technology. Uh. It's, it's amazing. All right, guys. Well, I think we're out of time. So uh, we should probably write an epilogue to this thing, huh? Melissa, thanks so much for joining Jason and I, and thanks so much for helping us uh, be really confused about something that we (laughs) felt like we understood, but now we definitely do not. Yes, thank you. You're so welcome. Thanks for nothing and not answering my question at all. Yeah, hopefully we (laughs) will your expectations. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding. I had a great time. Thanks for having me. Anytime. Bye, guys. See ya.